fought okay. for the candidate for Iowa First District, and uh, I believe Gatman wants to report. Yeah, I got it started, so if that's where he's going to first station. Huh? Did you want to have uh, 10 or 15 minutes and then open for 10 minutes of questions? Um, I can give a real short rundown. Can you take us upstairs? Run for. Can you take us upstairs? And then go right to questions. And like I said, you're welcome to come back because we're uh, extremely light today. Okay, well, I'm Jason Faulkner. I'm running for the U.S. Representative District 1. Um, District 1 is 12 counties, um, mainly Eastern Iowa, uh, Scott, Jackson, Clinton, Dubuque, Clayton, Blackhawk, Bremner, uh, Jones. I think it, that pretty much covers about all. It's a large area. Um, I'm not sure where the cutoff is between Davenport and Bluegrass. You say you're District 2. Um, it's in there. Uh, I'm running to uh, basically repeal NAFTA, <coughs> stand on our Second Amendment rights. Um, if you're not familiar with what's going on, there's a lot of legislation right now to regulate uh, ammunition, regulate weapons, try to get away from the 50 caliber type shot uh, rifles, etc. Um, I do not believe in this. I believe we do have an absolute right to bear arms, um, and that's where I stand on that. Um, the NAFTA problem is, well, we want to be post-NAFTA before, or pre-NAFTA, we had a uh, surplus in trade, and now when you look back over a 14-year period, we're like $70 billion in deficit. And uh, your local, your current legislators will say that NAFTA's been good for the country. Well, if a deficit's good and a surplus is bad, you know, they're kind of living in an opposite uh, world. <coughs> um, term limits. We want to establish term limits for representatives, both uh, the U.S. House and the Senate. Uh, five terms for U.S. representative, no more, and two terms for senators, no more. Um, then if they want to go back and do something, they can get involved in their state legislature. That's uh, how we feel about it. And uh, pretty much that's where I stand. What, what motivated you to run? Well, what motivated me to run was ever since I've been little, I've paid attention to what's going on, and uh, it never struck me that we live in a liberty country, um, ever since I can remember. Um, liberties have been violated time and time again. Um, the, biggest, the biggest trigger point was when they passed the Patriot Act, uh, which completely violates the Fourth <coughs> Amendment. Um, the legislatures at the time, of course, they had been trying to pass this for a while. Um, they seen 9-11 uh, as a perfect opportunity to shove it through, shoved it through. Democrats and Republicans alike voted for it. Um, it pretty much had very little opposition, and that was my big decision. Yeah, it was in the can before 9-11 even came around, so yeah. they were just waiting for something to... Something big to it. shove it through, and yeah. they got it. Uh, opinion on the, the uh, Federal Reserve System? I think the Federal Reserve System should be shut down. Um, I've read a lot of Ron Paul's words. I, I really like the guy. Um, it, it makes a lot of sense. Let's go back to a gold standard. Um, this was a protective measure to our monies, to our printed monies and coin money that they did away with. Um, if you don't know much about it, modern money mechanics is something you can check out. It, explains how it's done with the fractional reserve, um, which is basically just a computer credit. There's nothing there, nothing backs your money, basically, part of my expression, you can wipe your butt with it. It's not worth anything. It's pretty much a receipt, and uh, it weakens our country. Obviously, it's weakened our economy, and uh, it's just needs to be, it's an old system that needs to be done away with. Um, back in 1824, when Andrew Jackson ran. Uh, his big thing was to close down the first U.S. bank that we ever had. Um, of course, he was censored by Congress for doing this, but he got it successfully done. And uh, during that time, there were a couple depressions uh, while the system was up and running. It was much like the Federal Reserve is today. Um, and uh, after it was closed down, the uh, boom-bust cycles kind of went, uh, went to the wayside until 1900, I think it was 1931 or so when the um, Federal Reserve Act was uh, re-signed and 1913. we've been underneath this ever since. Well, I'm
I'm going to ask you the same question that I uh, asked another individual and, and brought up the uh, Second Amendment issues. And we now have uh, the gun bill which can take guns on a misdemeanor um, without a hearing, uh, no proof, nothing. You can just walk in and take your guns. This bill was pushed through by the Iowa Coalition for domestic against domestic violence. Um, they, uh, I fought them very hard on this uh, without success. Um, we know you're standing on the Second Amendment, but how will you uh, approach or handle uh, very intensely strong left-wing women's groups that are going to aggressively want to fight you? Well, handle these I will fight them aggressively back. <laughs> we absolutely have a right to bear arms. This has absolutely been fundamental since the development of this country. Um, it was put in there, again, it was a protective measure in case the people had to <coughs> resist tyranny. Okay, by any means, by taking weapons away, you have no proof anybody has done anything. Um, and just by going in and taking your weapons is further gets their agenda of, well, we're going to get everybody's weapons eventually, and you're going to be helpless against whatever we do to you. Um, like I say, all I can do is say I will fight them aggressively on it. Um, talked with other members, um, if elected, that uh, have the same uh, viewpoints, and all we can do is fight them back aggressively. That's really it. And there's another aspect of it, the, the, you have the right to life, <clears throat> and you have the right to protect your life, so, uh, you know, that's an angle that doesn't get argued much, but... Oh, absolutely. Um, however, they'll say that you really don't have this right to protect your life, yada yada, it's an argument that's been, it's been used time and time again. Um, um, if you go back to court cases, I'm not sure right off the top of my head, a whole number of them, but I can look them up where people sh shot people in fear of their lives, they still go to jail for it. Um, which really, like you say, you do have a right to protect your life. Um, this country was founded on uh, all of our rights and liberties and life is, well, the biggest liberty of all. And uh, if we can't protect our rights, if we can't protect our lives, then we, we've just lost already. Um, well, this was my approach to them when fighting this bill. I said, why aren't you creating programs to teach women to protect themselves and to arm themselves rather than to be victims? And at that point, all conversation ended. I, I was told in no uncertain terms that they had no more uh, desire to have any conversations with me whatsoever. Well, it goes back to they just want to strip Exactly. Weapons. They're a very powerful you group. And how, you, how, you gonna, how you gonna change that argument? How you gonna how you gonna win them over? Uh, well, you you some people you just can't win over. Um, Assuming that, how you gonna win them over? Um, well, how am I gonna win them over? Well, I would do like uh, what Veronica here did, and I would just uh, say, hey, you know, there's other ways uh, to go about this. Uh, there's self defense courses, etc. That women can learn, pick up, uh, use to defend themselves. Um, my sister always said, I uh, carry a lit cigarette with me so I can stab somebody in the eye with it if I get attacked, you know. Uh, I mean, there are, there's a lot of ways around it. You just have to maybe be more persuasive. I don't know the people involved in the group, uh, but sit down with them and be more persuasive. <laughs>